Now, Monica, I would be a rich man if I had if I had a dollar for every time somebody said quantum to me at uh, at uh, this particular conference. But can you tell me what the difference is between a quantum simulator and, and a classic simulator? The basic answer would be, of course, that it's made of uh, quantum systems, right? That actually interact with each other in a quantum mechanical way. Now, the question may be, OK, what's that? And um, if you think about a classical simulator or maybe even a classical computer, then that's easy to understand. So we, we have something to calculate zeros and ones. We have bit strings and, and we all know how that works. Now, if you look at a quantum system, that's much more challenging because they are not only one and zero. There's a lot in between. And um, because that's so hard to compute and capture classically, the idea is now to build a quantum system that behaves in a proper way. The challenge is you actually have to be able to control these individual quantum systems to a very high degree. How does that work with a simulator? Right, so the simulator uh, does exactly that. So the basic idea is we do an analog quantum simulation. So you have some problem that is hard to compute classically that you would like to study. Okay. So now that can be very complex, has many degrees of freedom, could be a material, there's all sorts of things that are challenging to capture. And now theoretically we write down a simplified model, which has few microscopic parameters, few degrees of freedom that we would like to solve. But even that simple model is typically not solvable classically. So that's, uh, that's challenging. So what we now do is try to build the simple model in the lab. So we go ahead, we take these few degrees of freedom that we need, we recreate it in the lab where we control it very well, and then we probe its properties. And then the idea would be to have a feedback to the theory so that we can learn something from the quantum simulation that we then uh, give back to the theorists in order to have better approximations, maybe um, understand, well, are these all degrees of freedom? Do we, need, do we need to add more? And then there would be like this feedback loop between these, these systems. How much more powerful do you think uh, quantum simulation will be? I know it's early days and you've got right. a lot of things you're trying to work through, but you know, what's your hope? So my hope would be that during the next few years, we actually find efficient ways to verify and benchmark our experiments to begin with, because um, that's the challenge. Right now, we have very well-controlled quantum systems, and we can compare them to theory in the regimes where we can actually describe it completely. But we want to go beyond. And going beyond means that we need to find some way, either by uh, cross-platform verification or by other benchmarking techniques, to actually build trust in our simulations that we can say, OK, we do run this computation and we actually believe uh, the result that comes out of it. What got you so interested in this field? So for me personally, it's just fascinating to see all of this, all of the beautiful physics of quantum mechanics to unfold in the lab so that you can actually really see that uh, the systems that you build behave quantum mechanically. You can control them, even manipulate them and really, if you wish, uh, play with quantum mechanics in, in the lab. And that's, that's what really got me excited about this. And because they are um, quantum systems that we control in the lab, they are um, broadly applicable to other research areas so you can use them and actually learn new physics like they can be applied to different model Hamiltonians that you can can study mm -hmm. and so there's always room for learning more on our end and, and, and see what we can use them for. Describe for me some of the breakthroughs you've had in your lab. I think the most um, important one was really on the engineering side so one question for quantum simulators is what can we apply them for like what model systems can we actually look at and we have worked for a number of years now on um, implementing topological lattice models, which is something that does not just naturally occur if you prepare the atoms in the lattice. And this required the development of new techniques, new experimental methods in order to get there. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we are quite proud of that, that we have developed some of these techniques which are now used in, in many different labs around the world. So I think that's one of the biggest contributions at this point um, that we could make. A lot of the interviews we've done today People have been talking about new breakthroughs. They've been talking about it's a very exciting time to be in physics and, and, and we, with quantum, with, uh, you know, we've, with, we've got a lot of different techniques with data now and we've got a lot of ways of analyzing data and that we're on the cusp of, of, of something big. Do you think that's right? Well, I think it's definitely exciting to find out within the next few years how well these systems work and how far we can push them 
in order to, to develop new technologies and learn new physics. So I think we are at the brink of finding that out, uh, which makes this, these days very, very exciting.